Woods and welcome to the first solution video for this hands-on lab where we're going to be setting up and attaching a firewall to a virtual network. The first thing we will see in our resource group is these resources that were deployed with our lab. And among these resources is the virtual network where we will deploy our Azure Firewall resource. To get started with our lab solution, we will create our Azure Firewall by navigating to the Create button here in our Resource Group Action menu and click it. Then we're going to type Firewall into the search bar and hit Enter. And we will create our firewall by navigating to the appropriate resource tile for Azure Firewall where we will then click the drop down and select create to load our portal into the creation wizard for the Azure Firewall service. To get started configuring our firewall, we're going to make sure the pre-selected subscription and resource group are correct. Next, we're going to make sure that we select the appropriate region, which for this lab will be the same region where we have all of our resources deployed for our resource group. And then we're going to duplicate this tab here and we will navigate ourselves back to our resource group to find our region. The main idea here is to take a mental note of the Azure region so you can deploy the firewall into the same region as your virtual network. This way we can associate it with the appropriate virtual network with the Azure firewall subnet. So we'll select our appropriate region for this deployment. And then we will name our firewall resource FWTAC1. And the next thing we will do is select our firewall SKU for this firewall deployment. Now we're going to be using the basic SKU. And we will see this is going to be a firewall SKU that is policy managed and uses Azure Firewall Manager, which requires a firewall policy resource to manage the firewall rules, which means we have to create a firewall policy resource because we don't have one. Fortunately, we can create that as part of this deployment. We'll click Add New here to create the firewall policy resource. And we're going to name this policy resource FW Policy Tac 1, and we're going to select our region. And then we're going to click OK. And this is going to create that firewall policy where the firewall rules will be defined. And then for our next configuration, we're going to select our virtual network, which is going to be our existing virtual network. We could create a new one, but we will just select this existing one. Once we have it selected, we can move on to creating a primary public IP address for our firewall since we don't have an existing one. We will create this public IP with the name pip tac fw tac one Next, we're going to click OK, and our next step is creating our management public IP address resource, which is only a requirement for a basic SKU Azure firewall. We will create this public IP with the name pip tac mgmt as an abbreviation for management, then finish off the name with our tac one iteration, and finally we will click Review and Create. The portal will validate this deployment for configuration issues, and if no issues exist with this deployment config, then we can proceed by clicking Create, and it will send this deployment to the Azure Resource Manager and appropriate resource providers to create our firewall. Now remember this firewall is policy-based, which means that we will manage it using the Azure Firewall Manager. We will create our firewall rules inside of our policy resource. This is different from classically managed Azure firewalls where we had to manage the firewall rules on the firewall resource itself. Now this resource deployment can take about 45 minutes, so we're going to skip ahead to when it's done using Movie Magic. Alright, we're back, and our policy-based Azure Firewall deployment is complete. Now we'll go into the firewall resource, and we're going to grab our private IP from our firewall overview page because we're going to need it for creating a route inside of our route table, which we're going to create next. So we will copy the private IP to our clipboard, and then we will begin creating our route table by navigating back to our home page, and then navigating to our resource group. Then if we navigate to the marketplace and search the term route table, we will find our route table service tile, and we can select the drop down menu and select create. Now we can configure our route table starting with its name. We will name it route table 1, and we will put it in the same region as our virtual network so we can associate it with our subnet, and after a few moments this route table will be done provisioning, and once it is done, we can add our firewall route to this route table by navigating to our route table resource. We will configure it with the name route 1, and we're going to select the destination type IP address option. Then we're going to provide our 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 address, which equates to traffic destined for anywhere. Then we will select our virtual appliance as our next hop type option. And then we will paste in our next hop address, which will be the private IP of our firewall. Now with this configuration, it will send all traffic to our firewall. We will finish this route off by clicking Add. And this will add this route to our route table. Now the next step is associating this route table with our subnet, which we can do by navigating to our subnet's blade. And to add our association, we choose our virtual network. And then our subnet from within this virtual network where we want this route table to be implemented. If for some reason you don't see the virtual network, make sure to check that the route table is deployed into the same region as the virtual network. Once we have this subnet association selected, then we will save this config. Now this route table is going to be associated to the subnet, and any routes contained within this route table will be added to any resources within that subnet. We can verify that this route is being picked up by our virtual machines by navigating to our service VM, and then navigating to the networking related blade. Then we can navigate to the associated network interface. And if we check our effective routes by going down to the effective routes blade for this network interface resource, we should see the following user defined route now being picked up by the associated route table. All right, with that complete, the next step is for us to navigate to our home page and then go to our resource group. 
in our resource list, we will find our firewall policy and go into the resource. And this is where we'll be able to create our first rule, which will be our DNAT rule. And if we go to our DNAT rules, we can add a rule collection, and we will name it NAT collection. And we're going to give this a priority number of 200. And we're going to put this rule collection in the default DNAT rule collection group. We will name this rule RDP. And we're going to configure our source type to be an IP address. With our source address being from anywhere, then we will select TCP as our protocol. And then we will select our destination port, which will be 3389, the default RDP port. Then we're going to provide our firewall resource primary public IP address. Once we see it, we can copy it and navigate back to our firewall rule and paste it in. Next, we will provide the private IP of our virtual machine so that we translate our traffic from public to private to this VM which requires us to go back to the resource group so we can grab the virtual machine's private IP. We'll go to our service VM, and we're going to grab the private IP from the resource overview page. We will copy it to our clipboard and bring it back to paste it in as our translated address. And then we will provide our translated port, which is also going to be 3389. And with all of these items configured, we will click Add. And now this will add this rule collection to our firewall policy resource, which is associated with our firewall resource. Updating firewall rules can take a couple minutes, so we're going to skip ahead to when this update is complete. All right, we're back. And our net collection with our RDP rule has been added. So now we'll go into our network rules. We're going to add a rule collection, and we will name it NAT collection. We will select network as our rule collection type, and we're going to give this a priority number of 200. And we're going to make the rule collection action allow if it isn't already set to allow. We're going to use the default network rule collection group, and then we're going to name this rule DNS. For this rule, we're going to use the address range of the subnet where our service VM exists for our source address, and we can grab that by coming back over here to the other browser tab, and navigating to the networking related tab of our VM. We'll navigate to the associated virtual network. We will navigate to subnets, and we'll see the address range is 10.0.0.0 slash 24 for our subnet. We'll copy this address to the clipboard, then we'll bring it back here to the rule, and we'll paste it in, and then we're going to select UDP as our protocol. And for our destination port, we'll use port 53, which is the default port for DNS. And then our destination type for this rule will be set to IP address, with our destination addresses being 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 .8 and 8.8.8.4.4, which are Google DNS servers. And we're going to save this rule by clicking Add. Now this is going to add this network rule to our default network rule collection group. And again, this can take just a few minutes to update, so we're going to skip ahead to when this is complete. All right, gurus, we're back, and our net collection rule is complete. So now we're left with just our application rule. We'll go to application rules here. We're going to add a rule collection, and we're going to name this our app collection. It's going to be an application rule type with a priority of 200. Then we're going to select the allow action for this rule collection if it isn't selected already. And then we're going to put it in the default application rule collection group. Now we're going to name this rule www.microsoft.com, and its source is going to be the 10.0.0.0 slash 24, so that it affects only the subnet for our service VM. And then we're going to put our protocol here, which could be our port numbers or the protocol name. We will use the protocol names, which are HTTP and HTTPS. Next, we will provide our FQDN. And as we see from the example, we can use wildcards to capture any subdomains. But for our rule, we will type in the FQDN of www.microsoft.com. And with this configuration, we will deny any traffic for HTTP and HTTPS that isn't a match for www.microsoft.com. We can finalize this rule by clicking Add. And now this is going to add our final rule collection here for this lab. Now we just completed creating all of our rules for our NAT, our network, and our application rule collections as we see here. Now, what we're going to attempt to connect into our service VM to test our very first rule, which is our NAT collection DNAT rule, which should allow us to connect over RDP using the public IP of our Azure firewall. And so we'll copy this here, and then we're going to go over to our remote desktop client. We will add the PC, paste in our public IP here, and we will set our friendly name to firewall. I'm going to click out here, and then I'm going to attempt to connect to it. And what we're going to use to connect are the credentials that are available to us for this resource. And so, if you go to the lab page and you get your credentials for your service VM, you should be able to log in. And it's going to be our cloud underscore user, and we're going to click continue. And this is going to validate that the rule on our firewall is working correctly, because we're able to connect to it through our public IP address for our RDP session. For this test, we were able to validate that this first rule successfully worked for us. Now, the next rule we're going to take a look at is our network rule collection, where we're going to test that we can connect to these DNS servers here for 8.8.8.8 as well as 8.8.4.4. Now, what we're going to have to do is come back over here to our resource group and go over to our service VM, and then we're going to go to the networking tab where we will see the networking configuration, which includes items such as the associated network interface. We're going to update the DNS service here to be custom instead of inheriting from the virtual network. We're going to make these match what we have inside of that net rule, which is going to be 8.8.8.8 as well as 8.8.4.4. We're going to save this here, and it's going to save these new DNS servers for our service VM.
So this should take just a moment to update. And if for whatever reason we notice that that doesn't work, we can always update the virtual machine by restarting it. And then it will take this new DNS server configuration. Now, if I come back over here to my client that is inside of the VM that we've connected to using RDP, and I open up PowerShell, we'll be able to validate that we have our net rule working. And so I'll paste in my command here using Control shift v And then I will hit Enter to run it. And we see that this is successful here for our Google DNS network rule. So we validated this network collection. And now the final thing that we're going to validate here is our app rule. Now, if we open up our Internet Explorer and click OK, then maximize the window before we begin. Now, what we're going to do is to try and visit Microsoft.com. And we're going to see here the action is denied. It's denying this because we don't have a rule match on our firewall. However, if we come over here and we type in our www.microsoft.com, we'll be able to access this web page here. Now, if we were to put the wildcard, we would have been able to access anything on the Microsoft.com with any subdomain including the www. Alright, so now we've tested the connectivity and we validated the deployment of our firewall, our policy, and the rules that it contains. We're all set for this hands-on lab. Thanks so much for joining me in this hands-on lab.